So Rennie's ready. So I'll say it again. He is now a keynote speaker, leadership coach, author, and former linebacker. I mentioned all of his teams here, and he joins us today. Rennie is from Snellville, Georgia, but I'm not sure that he's there. Hey, Rennie, before we get into what you're doing now and stuff, can you talk a little bit about your time with the Edmonton Eskimos, 2013-14, and what was going on with the franchise then, and then BC afterwards in 2015, and just what did you take away from your time in the CFL? Yeah, it was really amazing, and uh, first and foremost, I want to just tell you guys thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on the show today, and my time in Canada in the CFL was amazing. I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, all I knew was, was that it was going to be cold. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, I wanted an opportunity to just get back on the field. I wanted to be able to showcase my talent and uh, hopefully make it back to the NFL and uh, just do what the Lord uh, blessed me to do. But it was really ultimately about finding my passion again of playing football. And I was able to do that being in Edmonton and uh, just really formed a bond uh, with the teammates that I was able to play with. Amazing guys, you know, J.C. Sherritt, uh, so many amazing players, man. I, I learned a lot about myself during that time, and uh, just being able to get back on the field, make some plays, but it really, I mean, any guy you talk to that gets the opportunity to play, it's always about the guys that you, you're playing next to. It's all about, you know, your teammates and, and really going hard. So both in Edmonton and NBC, I was able to make some great relationships. J.C. Sherritt and then Adam Big Hill and some of the players out there in, in uh, uh, BC as well. So it was a great time. And then, of course, getting to travel as well was, was awesome. I don't know if Jack Fulton told you, but I was the broadcaster for 20 seasons with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So I remember you well and how the Riders always had to account for where you were on the field, a uh, fierce linebacker in that Edmonton defense. But can you... Once and for all, tell our viewers about the talent level between the National Football League and the Canadian Football League. You spent significant time in both. You probably talk about it in the States all the time to people because it seems to be a huge topic, or at least it is up here. How would you compare the talent level between yeah. the two? I, I'd say it's definitely neck and neck. I mean, you got a lot of guys who play in the CFL who played on NFL rosters and who uh, performed extremely well. And that was one of the things that, really what's surprising to me was coming from playing in the NFL with the Tennessee Titans uh, and then going up to the CFL was just how many guys that were up there that were more than good enough to play on NFL rosters. And maybe it was a case where they didn't get an opportunity. Maybe they got hurt or uh, had some type of trouble they ran into. Uh, but ultimately, the, the talent was there. And you, you see it even now. A lot of guys are going back and forth between the NFL and the CFL. And it was good quality football. The fans were amazing. Uh, still get uh, reached out to by, by fans even now. And that, that was a cool thing about being a part of the Edmonton Eskimos or organization, which is learning about the history of uh, their organization and just being able to be a part of it. I, I come from, you know, playing at University of Georgia in the South where football is literally religion. And so being in Edmonton gave me that similar feel. And uh, it was a great thing to be a part of. Randy and John Lynch here. The Eskimos are supposed to be changing their name to, we believe, the Elk. Have you heard that, or can you confirm that or deny it? And uh, what do you think of that? We, I, I think they should st should have kept the Eskimos, by the way. Uh, I, I did not hear about that. That's uh, that's interesting uh, to, to hear. I mean, I don't know much about Elks at all, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't tell you much on that one. I, I, hope, I hope not. <laughs> I think it's going to happen. Uh, the NFL right now, the big story, the Aaron Rodgers situation. How do you see that? Uh, is he is he getting mm. too, too much of a uh, uh, notoriety there, or what? Did he think he deserves to be had more attention paid to him? Well, I, I mean, I I think it's definitely a complex and tough situation when you look at a guy like Aaron Rodgers and just what he's brought to that organization, uh, and not only to that organization but the NFL as a whole. He, he's been not only a great uh, competitor, but just somebody that has uh, really helped to build the brand uh, of the NFL at his position. And so for how he's being treated now, it, it really kind of shows how some of these organizations treat their players. You know, unfortunately, uh, we all know that NFL stands for not for long. long and uh, it, it's easy to kind of realize that when it's uh, the majority of players, right? The, the guys who are free agents or the guys who are getting cut here and there, who aren't the big names, but when you see it happen to a guy like Aaron Rodgers, it kind of reminds you that this is a business. You know, it's not always <laughs> the friendliest business. It's, it's not always uh, um, most ethical and things like that. And, and so it's unfortunate to see how things went 
Um, when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, I, I feel like it could have been conducted in a lot better way. Um, but it's, it's part of the business, unfortunately. Great game, crappy business. By the way, Rennie Kern's with us and uh, star at University of Georgia, regarded as the most dominant defensive player in the game by the Sporting News, first-team All-American, first-team All-SEC, sophomore All-American, freshman All-American. You know all this stuff, Rennie. I'm just telling our viewers. But at the top of your Wikipedia page, says a keynote speaker, leadership coach, and author. How in the world did that come about? Man, it's, it's, it's crazy. And it was one of the, the toughest parts of my life, man, when I actually, that actually led me uh, to becoming a keynote speaker and author. And, um, you know, when I think about just the whole journey, it really started long before uh, I actually became a keynote speaker. So meaning that as I was rising uh, in notoriety and, and really building that platform as an athlete, I started to get opportunities in my community, right? So as I was at University of Georgia, even in high school, I would get asked to go and speak to a Little League team and then uh, got asked to speak at a church. And then uh, it grew from there to started getting asked to speak at Rotary Clubs and the businesses. And there were just little hints and sprinkles of, of my destiny throughout my journey as an athlete, man. And, and um, you know, the Lord just gave me that platform to be able to speak. And another thing, as you all know, as athletes, we do a lot of interviews. And for me, one of the things I took pride in was not just being the, uh, that athlete who gave the cliche answer, just saying, you know, if, if somebody asked me, how'd I make this play? I'm just saying, oh, I, I just, this is just what I do or something, you know, just generic. I really wanted to give thought provoking answers. And so that's where it really started as far as me developing that skill of public speaking. And then as far as becoming an author, I became an author, man, uh, at a, right after I got cut. So I was at a time of uncertainty, was really just trying to find my identity, was trying to look for different ways that I could leverage the time that I had. Because in between going from Tennessee to Tampa Bay, I spent about eight months back home. So I didn't want to do what a lot of guys do, which is just stay home and work out and then play video games. So I wanted to not only leverage that time, but I thought about who else could I impact by my experience? Who else could I pour into by what I was going through? And so that's what gave me the inspiration to, to become an author and a speaker. Well, good for you. So how busy are you with it? How can people follow you and uh, maybe have you uh, speak for their event? Yeah, I, I'm extremely busy, man. And it was one of the things I did when I wasn't on the field in Edmonton and in, in, uh, BC. I released an agent um, right before I left to come up and play in, in uh, the CFL. And from there, I started speaking at businesses, started speaking at associations, Worked with a guy by the name of John Gordon who wrote a book called Energy Bus and uh, has really just grown from there, man. I've been able to take a lot of the principles and the lessons from the football field, whether it's leadership, team building, mindset, performance, and apply it to the business world. And so been able to work with a lot of great companies all over the nation and everything. So if you are a, a person or individual or company out there that would love to work with me, easiest way to do that is through my website, RennieKern.com. Or you can reach out to me through Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, any one of those platforms. It's just at Rennie Curran. And I'd love to work with uh, you, you know, any uh, individual or organization. So, guys, thank you so much. You betcha, Rennie. Well, congratulations on a great career. Thank you for giving back. And uh, keep in touch, my friend. Thanks for this today. Yes, sir. Thanks, Have Rennie. a good one. All right. Former Edmonton, BC linebacker, as well as Tennessee Titan and Tampa Bay Buccaneer Rennie Curran. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.